This episode starts with three Yamahas on a bike trailer and an angle getting loaded into the back of the 300. So Shell's concern is the fridge is in and when we go shopping, we take these in. Maybe is she going to be able to get these in? Yeah, you can. You can actually do it. You can do it. Oh, there you go. There you go. You need to be strong or drink really light beer. <laughs> get it light beer. But what do we plug it into? This is a 240 volt inverter, or is it 220 volt? But it's 100 watt, I don't understand. Luckily, I put the Anderson plug in at the back for when we take the Jayco away and keep the fridge cool. So hopefully, the door will shut. So let's hook up the big angle, assuming it's gonna shut. Oh no, me lead. Ooh, that sounds like a really tight fit. Yeah, but you know what? It's still loose in there. We'll power it up and we'll check the voltage. What we might do is some numbers. So just sitting here looking real pretty, we have 12.56 volts. It's hooked up. So now the fridge is feeding off this battery and we're at 12.47, so it's drawing a touch. So we're not leaving till the morning and we're gonna load that fridge up. So we better check that before we go and try and start it. Running the big Kumo 275 7018s, the AT52s. Well, they're not that big, but they're bigger than them. Early start this morning, 3.30 in the AM. Trailer's hooked up, now let's check that voltage. If anyone's disarmed that sound, comment down below. Neighbours will appreciate it. Good sign, the fridge is still powered. Ooh, 12.2. Will the big girl start? Not a problem. Found a use for this PowerPoint after all. Charging up the drone batteries as we drive. We'll zero that trip meter, let's see. The 275s are as fuel efficient as the factory tire. So we're almost at our destination. Now while it's gonna be a couple of days of riding bikes, we're also scouting out for a potential second drive till you drop for this year. So while we've had the questions on the 275, 7018s, whether or not the fuel consumption changed. So I think it is a little bit heavier, but I'm only running 38 PSI in these tires. What we might do on the way back is put a bit more air in them, square that sidewall up and see if the fuel consumption changes. So where we sit right now, 13 liters per hundred. So that's with the bike trailer in tow now, the weight's not gonna worry this vehicle. There was no headwind. Very little hills coming out this way to Tamworth. So you be the judge on whether this is good as far as rock collection goes. I'm only used to mud tyres. Now look, there's a few in there, but overall I would assume this is acceptable. So yeah, I've not had a wagon for a long, long time going back to our Brown 60 series. But as far as dust seals go, I mean, I'm not gonna complain about this one. Have a look. The only little bit of dust beyond the seal is where the angle cord was coming out. We get our gear on and the first thing we do is go for a ride. Property owner Paul takes Shell in his 79 and takes us to a few spots of interest for the Forby. It's so steep. What a beautiful farm he has. So Dave Metcalf has run a triple S winch challenge here on this property and he used this section here for a couple of his stages. I was frothing at the mouth. I can just pitch a bullet and all bullets friends. Loving this. Go up and around the big boys line. It's getting late so we head back to the house and the kids get a treat.
They get to feed the cows and the alpacas. What a great day. Thanks Paul and Sarah for putting us up. So the next morning after brekkie, we suit up and off we go on our bikes again in a different direction this time. Find a few more areas that the big Forbies would love. Back just before lunch and Paul drags out another toy, another treat for the kids. This is really cool. It's a potential stomping ground for one, don't you think? Bombed! Bombed! Problem is now, it's probably gonna lift wheels. Hello. Hey, this isn't a blue Yamaha. So much air back here. <laughs> the center diff lock in so we are in true four-wheel drive so we're off scouting some tracks and we're gonna have lunch somewhere it's officially not a soccer mum's car that's right when we put the Kumo big shoes on it changed it just eats it but in all honesty what we do want to see and I want to see it I want you people to comment if you want to see it I want to see Shell do a walk around on her 300 <laughs> and what she likes and the attributes of it that she would like to tell everybody about instead of us manly blokes going oh the wheel flex here and this will disconnect here and I've got bigger tyres than you big suspension lift what do you reckon? what did you just say? how smooth it is how smooth it is it's really lovely to drive and we're on 38 psi which way to go here? Straight through. Oh, she's getting a tickle on the tummy. She is getting a tickle on the tummy. I'm the long grass. You don't want to be doing a bird now. Ooh. You don't want to be doing a bird now. I don't know where your DPF actually is. I think it might be under the engine bay. It's doing it. No. <laughs> it's doing a burn. This is danger. <laughs> danger. Well, because of the long grass. Because if you stop and the exhaust gets to 700 degrees. Oh my goodness. Can fire you skip it? On the farm, I don't know. Copy, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're going to stop, let us know because the 300's doing a, a DPF burn. Yeah, no worries. And this long grass that we're driving in may pose a problem. The poor thing. <laughs> I know, it's always the worst time you're either pulling up at home and it wants to do a burn or you're driving in long grass. All right, so the leaf sprung, spun a wheel here. Ah, ah, look at that. Look at the long grass. Look, it thinks you're gonna hit it. Don't, you're gonna hit the grass. Lucky you bought a white car, show. Yeah. We have stopped. Copy why, are you stuck? No, he'd like to show you a track maybe for the 40s. Copy, Thanks, we'll be there soon. I was just uh, filming. Mum's car beeping because it thinks it's going to crash in the grass. You might end up with a few scratches. Oh, but lucky you bought a white car. It's just plain white, isn't it? 
Or is it the old lady Pearl? No, it's crystal white. Crystal white. Oh, we stopped it. Such comfort. And the Kumos, so far, been doing everything they've been asked of. Now there's nothing difficult about this track, but it still does get steep and in spots a little off camber. But the 300 soaks up the angles with ease and it's great to see Shell behind the wheel and enjoying herself. Yeah, it's not touching, it's a perfect size tire. Look, you can see there, the rear is coming out so that front wants to go up no touch that's awesome let's see if it touched that back left no touch mark I'm telling you what's it telling you oh i'm gonna hit some grass crested eagle coming to say good day show us the way there's another bit of an obstacle here coming off that main road where the cruisers are and you're coming up and back out that could just be like a little bit of a transit section Can somebody tell us what this is? We, we've worked out this here. It seems to move around. It's, the shape hasn't changed. Comment below, please. Shell's been looking at the literature book, the Bible, <laughs> whilst driving. That's how comfortable and smooth these things are. Give me out. Yeah. An old 79 with the six cylinder factory turbo. The axles are the same width. Easy. Does it easy? The GR Sport Gazoo Racing 300 Series. Send a diff locks in, but that's about it. It's an amazing vehicle. It's just so comfortable. Not just a pretty face and a great driver, but a worker. Picking her own lines while I was running back up the hill after you. Now most people would just bring a sandwich to a lookout like this on a day trip, but no. We go to the trouble of building a fire. We brought the hot plate with some sausages. How good is this? The Aussie bush. Perfect marshmallow. That's how you drive the buggy. Oh, that's definitely how you drive the buggy. So Nicholas, being Nicholas, has gone and walked in the... And I'm nearly walking in it too. Zinging nettle. Don't get on your face. And how's nature? And this stuff here. Rub this stuff on it. 
So you That's have a good stinging nettle plant, that one. Yeah, it, you have the poison, and then what grows around it is the remedy. Yeah. Okay. Is it better? It's getting better. That's amazing. It is amazing. What goes up must come down. Low four. No break. Wow, no break, she said. So we saw the 79s brake lights come on already. Well, I tell you, after a drive like today, that size tyre, the Kumo AT52s came in, are the perfect size. That rear end just wants to walk. It just works so well. It's a big angle and it's steep. She's doing awesome. Back in the cab, we got the cameras. The alarms go off a bit. The alarms go off a bit. So what else are we in? We're in low range. Low range. Center diff lock in. It's got the altimeter. We're going down this steep hill and we're accelerating just to keep momentum. What a machine. It's telling you when you're braking and accelerating. Look. I know. The harder you brake, that's cool. Okay. Now I want to see accelerate. That's like nothing. Yeah, so we want to know what that is. So we parked the 300 here, now we're not far from the edge of the property, but it was just getting too overgrown. Oh, where are we going? Oh, yeah. Property owner Paul, he knows his property so well. I, th I reckon he can get out there. We got a winch. You're right. Trust, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Okay, go back a bit. You got no lockers, eh? Go back a bit. Stop. Go hard left, hard right, and now just give it a little bit. Okay. All right, now we're gonna, we've got to turn up this, wait. Okay, go back. Let me have a look. Okay, that was a diff there. So you want to go a little bit right, slow, straighten up. As you are there, keep coming. Okay, now come to me. Okay, it'll climb. Now the back's gonna hit, so you gotta go. Yeah, keep coming. Head, head up the hill. Okay, now turn left. All right. Yeah, clear. How much you want? How much more you want? Let me have a look. Oh, we missed our turn off. <laughs> trust me, trust me. You're gonna have to have a few goes at it to square up. Okay, go back right. Yep, back left hand down. We've got to treat a winch off if we need it. Well, how's he behind? Okay, right hand down, square up. Hang on, let me just look in here. All right, have a go. Nah, go back. You have to have a good go. Trust me, trust me. Give it all the berries. <laughs> Woo! 
Well done. Throw something there. Yeah, you gotta go up this yet. Go to that powerhouse. Right oh, the bus is leaving. Now we were supposed to leave crack of dawn this morning. The kids wrote me into one more ride last night and that was to ride where we took the cruisers through the creeks. This ride right here was the perfect way to finish three days on this property. Most of the time I'm riding behind the kids and I've watched them grow over the years so much. has turned to more of an MX rider. Just go out on the track. See right in front of you to there. And I'd really like him to continue riding on property so he has that enduro skill behind him as well. But you can see here Amelia, the way she's crossing these creeks, she's an all-rounder. Pretty special riding with your kids. Bit of an update on the fuel consumption. Those K's we drove around the property, we're now up to 14.4 litres per hundred overall in the trip. So it was 13.1 coming onto the property and this is where we are now. So we've got six hours of highway driving ahead of us. All right, so we're fueling up and we thought we'd check the oil situation. It's got more oil than it needs. So it's yeah, 10 mil over. Producing oil. It's producing oil. So that's Toyota's 1000K complimentary service. They've, they're the last ones that have had this. 46. See if A, we feel any difference in ride quality, and B, the fuel consumption, whether it gets better. You can see across the top there, the heat mark. You can actually slowly see that starting to square up. Might actually go 50. We might zero the trip meter here and see if the consumption changes it's going to be roughly six hours home is what we drove up here but i reckon going up to 50 the sidewalls now quite square and we've given ourselves another 10 mil lift i reckon so at 14.2 litres per hundred we're going to zero this now for the run home along the highway. So yeah, look at that, the return run, almost exactly the same. Running the two different PSIs made no difference. I believe if it is a little bit worse than it was before, it's just the sheer size, the bigger diameter. And as always, thanks for watching.